Hello and welcome everybody to 1962. Now 1962 was a very tumultuous year in here in the United States. The space race was going on, there was Russia and the US and the Cuban Missile Crisis and first Walmart, golf clap everyone, golf clap. Marilyn Monroe famously saying happy birthday Mr. President with her big lips. That was, that's the best Marilyn Monroe impression I can do. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. It's beautiful. I know. She died. Okay. And here's the worst part about this. So she passed away. She died a few months later and it was a suicide under suspicious circumstances. What kind of lazy investigation is that? Well, you know, it's kind of suspicious how this is all unfolded, but we don't know a good investigator. If I knew a good investigator, if I were a detective, I would figure it out, but I'm not. So it's, it's just a suicide under... It's a tragedy. Speaking of tragedies, this is not a tragedy. This is a classic. The bullseye putter. This is under a Kushnet flanged bullseye putter. Let's go have a closer look. Not sure how well this is going to show up here, but you can see a Kushnet right here on the sole with Made in the USA, the bullseye, the copyright, and the flange right here. So this is obviously the flanged version, which destroys the ambidextrous nature of the original bullseye putter. This is pre Kushnet putter right here. And you can see obviously with the flange right here. The interesting thing about the flange though is you'll see pros through the through the ages, through the decades, they'll use this as a chipper. So they'll actually putt right-handed and chip with this side of the putter. What's the saying? A bad putt's better than a good chip or something? An average chip or I don't know. Is it chipping with a putter better than an average putt or a chip with a wedge who knows whatever the cliches are so looking at the face uh, this is you know the left face right here is so it's a right hand this is a right-handed model you can see the top line right here the little flange sticking out right here i don't know if this was stock but this one does have a cut right here to show the center strike and the brass is very dinged up i like this this is well used loved putter the uh, Shaft over Hosel right here, it does look like this has been bent several times just by the nature of this. So one of the nice things about brass is it is a softer metal. So if you want to adjust your lie, it's kind of user adjustable. Do I recommend doing that? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I don't see. I, with an older club, though, it's hard for me to recommend that because I don't know how brittle this brass is. I don't know if it's going to break on you. So either way, I don't know if I'd recommend it, but it is possible. Let's say it that way. So like I said, it kind of flares out here. You get this bell bottom effect with the shaft over hosel. And you have the nice crimping right here. You can see the crimping on the original. Crimp um, shafts are very common through Wilson sets and the Kushnet here. So stepless putter shaft, a beautiful putter shaft. I love stepless putter shafts. You can see I labeled it right here, 1962. Since they started, they've been making these flanged, this version of the flanged putter. A Kushnet bullseye since 1962. Made in the USA, I think that's referring to the shaft. And look at this split on the grip. This looks like some aftermarket, what is this, Lampkin grip. Not sure if you're going to be able to see that. It's just a Lampkin rubber putter grip. So an interesting, you can see the heel weight right here. An interesting putter. As I hold it right here, you can see it is toe biased. Toe bias but a lovely bladed putter that I feel is very elegant. But how does it do on my practice green? We should go try that out. Looking down at this putter, you really get the sense of occasion. I mean, the brass has such a heavy patina on it, all the dents and the discoloration. And I'm looking down at this, I'm like, this is an ancient club. And it gives me that feeling that I want, okay? And so here on this channel, we talk a lot about this X factor, this like, it, like we're not talking about science, we're talking about how it makes us feel. 
this gives me that feeling of like, I'm playing a vintage club and I love it. Love, 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 love this club. Also, this flange is really intriguing. I really want to get out and like practice like chip putting, chipping with this side of the club. I think it'll be fascinating and very inconsistent because I know myself. So this is a really interesting club under suspicious circumstances. Let me know your thoughts about the flanged Akushnet era bullseye putter. Something you remember watching golf on TV? Something you've played? Something you've gamed? Something you're familiar with? Let me know your thoughts and memories with this club and would you put it in your bag? For me, absolutely, 100%. If I have a 60 set, this could easily go in there. I'm saving this one. This is my putt. Get your own bullseye putter. I'm excited to read your comments. If you want to support this channel, you can actually go and visit the link in my description, my Amazon shop. I am an Amazon associate. I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. If you enjoy this content, obviously, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and the bell icon if you want notifications when I upload a video. Thank you so much for watching. I am the Vintage Golfer.